All right, so let's look at some of the homework from 7.3. Uh, we're going to start with number one. In general, the uh, first question should be easy. And, and this one is, but um, the idea here is it's a real-life situation where you might use a system of equations. So let's look through this one. Uh, researchers identified college students who generally were procrastinators or non-procrastinators. The students were asked to report how many symptoms of physical illness they had experienced throughout the semester. By the end of the semester, most students had some symptoms of physical illness regardless of their planning skills. The number of symptoms Y reported for non procrastinators was summarized by the function y equals 0.3x plus 4, where, point, uh, where x represents the number of weeks of the semester. Similarly, y equals 0.7x plus 1 was for procrastinators. Find the week in the semester where both groups report the same number of symptoms. So, um, what we should do, we can solve this one of three ways. We could solve it by graphing, substitution, or um, addition. Okay, so you could solve, could solve by graphing, substitution, or the elimin uh, addition slash elimination. Now, what I mentioned in the notes was it's uh, dangerous to solve by graphing. Let's fix that graph. It's dangerous to solve by graphing unless you have um, a grid close by. Okay, so since we don't have a grid for this one, let's not use substitution. I'm sorry, let's not use graphing. So I could use substitution or elimination. Now, because both of these equations are solved for y, I am going to use substitution. Okay, since both equations are solved for y. Let's get some light going. Since both equations are solved for y, it will be easier to use substitution. Okay. Again, you can use elimination, but you would have to first um, change the order around. That is, you would want to get it in the ax plus by equals c form. Graphing, you would need to have some graph paper. Since we don't have those, well, since that would require extra steps or a grid, I'm just going to use substitution. So, let me write these two down. y equals 0.7x plus 1 and y equals 0.3x plus 3.4. So since these are the same y, I can set these equal to each other. So think of it this way. 0.7x plus 1 is equal to y, right? And then at the same time, y is equal to 0.3x plus 3.4. Okay, that's also true. So it holds true that those are equal. So I don't really need this y in the middle. And now I have an equation of just x. Okay, so let's solve this. I'm going to subtract the 0.3x minus 0.3x. Uh, 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3 is 0.4x plus 1 is equal to 3.4. Now, some early algebra books would tell you to first multiply by 10 to get rid of your decimal. You have a calculator, so you, you don't have to do that. Okay. I'm going to subtract this one. Uh, I would be careful on this one. 
because if you're not careful, you're going to accidentally do 3.4 minus 1. You might do 3.4. Uh, you, you might mess up your decimal. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So 0.4x is equal to so 3.4 minus 1 is 2.4. Okay, the mistake here, you might get 3.3. If you did that by hand and you got 3.3, then just use your calculator. Okay, and we're going to divide by 0 0.4. So x is equal to, again, I'm going to do 2.4 divided by 0.4, 6. So, while that is intended to be an easy question, it took me quite a while to do. All right, but that's the way I would do it. All right, moving on. That was number one. Um, we're going to look at six, seven, and eight. Number six. Now, by the way, if it doesn't say to solve, don't solve. Number six says, when solving the, the system by addition, which is also the elimination, eliminate y by multiplying the first equation by four and the second equation by what? And then adding. All right. We want to eliminate y. Okay, so I'm looking at these columns, that column. So we're going to multiply the first equation by 4, and that will multiply 4 times minus 5 is minus 20. So I want this to be a minus 20 as well. Since those signs are the same, I want them to add. In fact, I guess I'll go through and just work it. Um, not the whole thing, but 4 times 2 is 8x minus 20x equals 100. Okay, all I care about, sorry, that's a y. All I care about is eliminating the y. So I want this to be a positive 20y. If I multiply this by 5, then I would still get a negative 20y. So I'm going to multiply it by a negative so that would give me minus 24, oops, sorry, minus 15x plus 20y equals 100. I don't care about solving this, sorry, minus 100. I don't care about solving this, I just wanted my y's to cancel. So I would have to multiply the second equation by a negative 5 so that when I add the y's, they cancel. Okay. But again, I don't have to solve it. I just need to answer that question. Number seven and eight ask us, are the following um, coordinates solutions? So that means I'm going to plug one in for x and three in for y and see if the equations are true, so watch. 2x minus y equals minus 1. Minus 4x minus 3y is minus 13. So I'm going to plug x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 3. And see if I get a positive, I'm sorry, I want to see if I get a negative 1 on the left side. So 2 minus 3 is in fact negative 1. So minus 1 equals minus 1 is true. Okay, So it needs to be true for both. Let's try it. Alright, minus 4 times um, 1, minus 3 times 3, do these equal 13? So minus 4 minus 9, is that equal to 13? 
Well, yeah, of course. But we can double check. Minus 4 minus, minus 9. Minus 13. So it is true minus 13 equals minus 13. So true. So because it works for both, it is a solution. Let's see what happens for number eight. Okay, number eight. We're going to do the same thing. We got to test 3, 2 into both of these. If it doesn't work for both of them, we quit. So Let's see, I can come down here and do it. 4 times 3 plus y equals 7. Oh, sorry, y was 2. Okay. 4 times 3, by the way, I'm plugging this into 4x plus y is 7. 4 times 3 plus 2 is 7. Question mark. Is that true? So 12 plus 2, is that equal to 7? 12 plus 2 is 14. That is not a true statement. So, if it doesn't work for both, meaning if it doesn't work for one of them, we can quit. Okay. Let's, let's move on. Next one I want to do, that was 9, 10, 11. Number 12 says to solve by graphing. Okay. I'll probably do this one, maybe one more, and then get to another video. Because I want to show you a couple of things. So, first let's solve it by graphing because that's what they want. All right. For this class, when we graph, when we do this, we're going to try to solve, we will graph by plotting intercepts. Now, sometimes in the homework, if you try another method, it may not take it. Okay, usually it'll specify uh, whether you got to use intercepts or not. I would say to be safe, use intercepts. Okay, I am aware this is slope-intercept form, and we could easily graph that using that process. But since we kind of were streamlining Chapter 7, I'm going to graph it with plotting intercepts. Okay. So I am going to find the x-intercept. So I guess the first thing i got to say is let's look at y equals x minus 2. Okay. I'm going to plot the x-intercept first. The x-intercept means let y equal 0 solve for x. Okay. So y is equal to 0. I get 0 equals x minus 2. If I add 2 to both sides, I get x equals 2. Okay. That is... That is my x-intercept. Okay. By the way, this is the point x comma y two comma zero. So I go over here one two. Now I got to plot plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept means let x be zero and solve for y. I would write this down so that you kind of get in the habit of always doing that and then that tells you how to do it. Um, so, x is going to be 0, so I have y equals 0 minus 2. And in fact, my work is done. Keep in mind it's x comma y, so this would be 0 comma minus 2 because my ordered pair is x comma y. So 0 minus 2 is right there. Let's graph this line first. Like I said, the solution is going to be where the two lines intersect. Now, when you are doing this on my math lab, 
will be a little, it will be very clear. All right, so let's do it again. Now we got to consider the other line, y equals minus x minus 4. Okay, so let's find the x-intercept for it. Let y be 0, solve for x. Okay, so 0 equals minus x minus 4. If I add 4 to both sides, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add this negative x. I'm going to add the opposite of the x, or the negative x, so that I will get x equals minus 4. Okay? I could have added the 4 to both sides and then had to divide by negative 1. So if I do that, that's one less step. So minus 4 comma 0. Okay. Now let's do this one in red. I'm going to do these points in red. Minus 4 comma 0 is here. Okay, so let's do our y-intercept for this line. The y-intercept, let x equal 0 solve for y. Okay. y equals minus 0, minus 4. Well, that's kind of weird. Minus 0 is just 0. And then 0 minus 4 is just minus 4. So that's the point, 0 minus 4. Okay. So let's plot that, 0 minus 4. It's right here. If I graph this line, it looks like, it looks like these are intersecting. Now we got to be, it's going to be on a whole number for us. It's looking like it's probably right there. Okay. So if I had to guess, because I'm doing it by hand, if I had to guess that looks like minus 1, comma, uh, minus 3. By the way, we need to also include the ordered paired notation. So don't forget the parentheses. Now, with that said, I want to also tell you, <clears throat> now, it's going to probably force you to graph it. If you're having trouble noticing this, remember how we solved number one in homework? I did the following. I said, because these are both solved for y, I can do the following. I could just set them equal to each other. Okay? So I could do this just to double check my work if I wanted to. Okay? So since I solve the set these equal, I get x minus 2 equals minus x minus 4. I'll solve this for x. I'm going to add x to both sides. I get 2x minus 2 equals minus 4. I'm going to add that 2. So I get 2x equals minus 2. And then if I solve that, I get x equals minus 1. And then to solve this, so I could solve this by substitution to check. Substitution to check. I mean, if this is on a test, I would check it just to make sure. All right, so I get x equals minus 1. I'm going to plug that into either of those. I'm going to plug it into the first one. I'm going to substitute x equals minus 1 into y equals x minus 2, because that's easier. y equals minus 1, minus 2, y is minus 3. That is the ordered pair. This tells me that is the ordered pair 1 minus 3, which is what I presumed it would be by graphing.
But again, as I mentioned before, it's sometimes dangerous to graph because if we're not doing it on a grid, on my math lab, uh, we might make a mistake. 